Hey, ladies and gentlemen, if I could have your attention, please. I know you guys have lots of great things going on. You're talking about your futures, right? Your dreams and everything you're going to implement. However, uh, I need to interrupt right now because we have our next speaker who is going to share with you. And uh, you're going to want to pay close attention to what Dion has for you today because she's going to talk about making an impact. And uh, she's made an impact in so many ways and so many lives. Uh, I think it's important to pay close attention to what she's going to sh share today uh, so that you too can take what she's already done and learn how to impact people, their lives, their businesses, their legacies, and everything else. So please join me in giving a warm uh, welcome, Ms. Dion Moser of New Time. How's everyone doing today? Great. Great. Thank you so much for coming. Did y'all have a nice lunch? Awesome. Thank Thanks, Mike. That was awesome. That was awesome. So I'm really excited to be talking with you today. Um, marketing and branding and helping you grow your business is a, a really big passion of mine. Uh, as you know, I also own Coworking Connections. So in that spirit, helping someone build and grow their business and have a solid foundation to which to grow a business is, is really, really important. And in surrounding yourself by amazing people that motivate you, push you, um, help you to risk, you know, put yourself out there and risk. Yeah. So I'm excited to um, come to you and talk to you about that today. Impact Marketing I've had since... Uh, 1999, I started it two months after my son was born, and I was living 3,000 miles away from any of my friends and family, so it was a big risk, and um, it was actually funny because um, I was working for someone, and I loved what I did. I, I was so passionate about it, but I, I was just helping him out. I, was, I just moved there. He's like, hey, do you want to help me out? So you find something. I'm like, yeah, great. So I started working there. And I was just like making nine bucks an hour, just helping them out. And I remember calling my dad and he was like, I, I love this job, but I can't, I can't live on nine dollars an hour. I can't do this passion of mine for that. He goes, Well, see if he, he would sell it to you. So um, I happened to make, you know, bring it up, and and the ball kind of got rolling. And and here I am thinking I just found out I was pregnant, um, living in a two bedroom apartment with my husband, and I mean my dresser for two years was a cardboard box. And um, they, they, he said, yeah, we'd sell it, and it would be $70,000. And I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. And I happened to tell my parents, and they took out $60,000 of their retirement, which was all they had, to get a loan for 10 and I started impact marketing. So it was a big risk. It was a big risk. My parents saw that in me. Um, I didn't know. I guess, you know, sometimes you're young and dumb. <laughs> I was just going. I was just, I knew I could do it. I was just, I was that person to jump in the seat and drive. So that's what I did. So 15 years later, here I am with impact. And about, uh, see, I moved my business here. I had started at Grand Rapids, Michigan. I moved my business here in 04. And I was working from home for the first time. I kept my office out there. The girls wanted an office. I thought, oh, I'm going to work from home. This is going to be cool. Working from home and going, sucks. <laughs> um, I loved working from home, but it was isolating. And it was, you know, I miss talking to people. And I, were, I was a workaholic. I wasn't. I know some people, they come in with their stories of, I did laundry. I got I get distracted by laundry or whatever. So um, I was the opposite. I worked 24/7, so I needed that break. So um, I uh, I finally launched this about three years ago. This is our third um, co-working week, and I'm really excited at the success of it. I'm excited to see the businesses that come in as little tiny things, and then go out at these huge companies. Um, one of my good friends just uh, he he started his company. I remember he come in one or two days a week with a little McDonald's bag, and he, he he's grown a million dollar company now. So it's it's really really cool to see that. So um, that's a little bit about me. So um, today I'm here to talk about creating an amazing brand. Um, and for me, when I start this out with customers. There's a lot of people out there that do marketing, and they're just like, here, this is what I sell, this is what I sell, this is what I sell. And you, and a lot of people, 
a lot of businesses just go, okay, let me buy this or that. They don't really get into the foundation of what it takes to build a strong marketing um, message. So that's what we're going to start with today. Um, hopefully this works. Yeah. Um, this is kind of where I start with a lot of my clients is the foundation of you. Um, and, and I don't know if some of you were here for Mike's uh, presentation this morning, and if you were not, go on to coworkingconnection.com forward slash speakers and watch his presentation. He talks a little bit to, about your why. And understanding your why and knowing your why and what you're passionate about is so important in anything that you build in your business and anything that you do every day. Because if you're focused on your why, the selling and the marketing and going out is so much more fun. So much more fun. So I'm just, I'm not going to really go into this a whole lot, but if you'll look at the worksheet, um, you can go through this. But it, it talks about what is your why, why do you get up every day, and, and to define that just a little bit more, it's, yeah. Do you have any more worksheets? Yes. Uh, can you see if my Yeah, I just printed out some more. Um, what is your why? And your why is, oh, because I want to I wanna make $60,000 a year or whatever. It, and it's funny because I, I gave this talk a year ago, and uh, my why then, when I was shared with the group, was I wanted an RV trailer to go camping with my son. Well, two, two weeks ago, I bought my RV trailer. Uh, so that's pretty cool because I was watching the video last night, you know, just recapping everything, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I did it! I did it. <laughs> so then I went, that's my why. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about that. Yeah, um, it's, it's planning out camping trips at the beaches. And I got to go do that a couple of months ago when I got my trip. So awesome. So, you know what? Being inspired by your why, my why was I had that picture of that camping trailer in my wall in my business. That was my why every day. This is why I'm selling. I'm not, oh, I'm going to go out and sell or I got to do this. It was like, yes, I'm gonna, I get to do this. I get to help people grow their business. And when I do, I get to buy my camping trailer, and that's exactly what I did. So knowing your why, get really clear on your why. And there's a there's some questions here on the worksheet um, to talk about what is your why, what are your goals this year to help you get to your why, and then what is your belief and your attitude and your mindset about marketing. That's kind of a big thing too when you start developing your marketing plan. Just kind of think of those things too. Um, Another conversation I had with a client, I'm sitting down, and she's like, oh, I think I need, you know, this marketing collateral, blah, blah, blah. So I went back to her, why? What is your why? Well, I love working with animals, and I love going to the pet park with my dog, and I like doing these things. Great. Why aren't you surrounding your marketing around that why? She's a real estate agent. She's not a real estate agent. Why aren't you doing balls for dogs or, or doing some sort of marketing and going to what your why is? And doing it there and surrounding yourself by people that have the same, you know, love and passion in your life. So, you know, so she's running with that. And now she's excited about it. She's excited about what she's selling, what she's doing. So really understanding the foundation of you, your why, why you do what you do. And then anything you can do, anything, any profession that you're in, you can pretty much surround your marketing around your why and why you do what you do. Um... So uh, I have a couple of pages on that for you to work on yourself, uh, you know, at home that uh, will get you thinking there on your whys. And then, so now we're going to go in a little bit deeper on the foundation of your business. And this this is what what you need to work on to help develop your marketing campaign and your message. It's really, really important that. You understand your message because if you don't understand your message, who else is going to understand your message, right? So, uh, what is your business organization's why? What are your business goals this year? What is the business currently working on? What What in your business is currently working that you're doing? Yeah, I'm doing I'm doing this and it's working great. But what are, you, what are you doing in your business that isn't working? What's not working? And really getting clear on this picture will help you really define and build your brand. How much money are you currently investing in your business on your marketing? And time. Um, 
knowing how long your average sales cycle is, is really important in building your brand. Uh, if you need to do a sales, uh, you have to know how long your sales cycle is to actually effectively put together how many step campaign, how many times you need to touch them, how long is it going to take. So my sales cycle um, for some of my little clients, you know, may only be a week or two. But my larger clients that I do business with, um, we do large uniform programs. Sometimes that's a year or two sales cycle. So really understanding that. So my investment in getting those larger clients is a lot bigger and it's a lot longer. It's time consuming. So being aware of who you're targeting, what your message is to them, um, and how long the sales cycle is. Um, and how much time and money are you willing to commit in the next 60, 90, or 120 days into your marketing campaign? Um, understanding some of these whys let's see, will help you um, will help you really develop your um, why are you wanting to do I just lost my train of thought, sorry. Why are you doing what you're doing? Um, so th that's kind of similar to the personal one. Those three pages there will help you um, do that. And if you don't have a copy of this, I can email this to you as well. Okay. Okay, now that you have a clear idea of why you wake up every day, you go to work, and you uh, who you're marketing to, um, the biggest mistake that a lot of clients make is, uh, or a lot of people make is they don't, understand their clients' needs and wants and who they're marketing to. So understanding who you're marketing to is really, really important and who what their message is. Are they are they uh, you know who are they? What are they doing? Are they male? Are they female? Are they sitting at a desk? Are they a secretary? Are they um, you know uh, male, female? What are their age categories? Understanding who are they and getting really clear on that. And some people have many products. I have a lot of products. I have a lot of services I offer. So there are, you know, specific things that I do that may only be my, if I'm looking at who they are, it might be a secretary. Their average age is between 35 and 45. Um, they're sitting at a desk all day. That's a whole different marketing campaign based on that segment. And if I'm targeting a small business entrepreneur, I'm going to have a different look at who my client is. So. Understanding a specific, and it's it's narrowing it down <clears throat> to a specific target audience. So, um, if you if you heard the, the saying, "Be niche, you get rich." With your marketing, you really need to narrow it down, and it can change every 30, 60, 90 days. You're going to go this this next 60 days. I'm going to focus on life insurance policies for uh, single moms with kids. So, you've really narrowed it down. Now, your message is going to be really specific. So understanding who they are that you're marketing to, to build your brand, is where you want to um, start. Who's a decision maker? Um, this is important because um, you, you, know, you need to know who to go talk to so you're not talking to someone that's not the decision maker. But even more important, once you understand who the decision maker is, it might be the CEO of a company that's a decision maker. But I really feel like one of the most important people that's always missed is the influencer. Does anybody know what the influencer is? Huh? It's also known as the gatekeeper. That's one. The influencer is the secretary, the gatekeeper. Um, the influencer also can be the kids. Manager. Yeah, can be the kids. Right? Mom comes home from work on a Friday night and wants to order something and the kids, what do y'all want to eat? We want pizza, we want pizza, right? right? The kids are the influencer of the mom. Well, where should we order pizza from? Well, one one uh, situation where we had a, a pizza company and they were trying to build their brand. So what they their influencers, they understood their decision maker was the parents, the influencers were the children. So they started implementing all the drivers carried candy. And every time they delivered pizza, they gave candy. So who do you think the kids wanted to deliver pizza, right? So really, you want to know who the decision maker is. But if there's an influencer, you need to make sure you know who they are. 
Um, so important. Um, something that, that may play into that, some people can sell nationwide. I can sell all of the United States. Some people can only sell in this region or Temecula Marietta area, right? So where are your people living? You don't want to advertise in a magazine or do some advertising if it goes outside of where your client lives. If you if you don't like to travel, you want to stay close to home, you know, you know, you pick or pick your map, pick your radius. How far do you want to go? Where do they live? And and also thinking about do they live in, you know, a hundred thousand dollar house? Do they live in a one million dollar house. Where do they live? What type of lifestyle are these people living in? So that will influence your marketing message and the material that you're passing out too. What do they do? You know, are they stay-at-home moms? Are they CEOs? Are they traveling? Are they whatever? Are they soccer moms? Um, what do they do every day? Understanding that because if you know that your ideal client, if you're targeting and you know they're all soccer moms. Where can you market and build your business by what they do? So if you want to target that, your message needs to be about soccer. You need to be in every soccer magazine in that area. You need to be at the soccer tournaments, whatever. So what do they do? What are they passionate about? Like in like the, the lady with the dog park, you know, she was passionate about working with people that loved pets. So she was at the pet pet place. How do they, how do they buy? Um, and why did they buy? Because those are two things to kind of look at. Um, you know, are they are they impulse buyers? Are they um, do they like to take their time? Are they type A, type B? You know, how do they how do they buy? Um, is is really important. That is, and that'll go with the sales cycle too. Uh, if you have a longer sales cycle because your client needs information then you need to make sure that you're giving that information so that they're not moving on to somebody else that is. So understand how they buy. Um, if they don't need a lot of information, if, if what your product is isn't too you know, in depth, then you don't want to spend a lot of time on it because you'll lose people because they just want to make a decision and go. So understand how they buy. Um, and one of the most important things is pain. What pain are you solving for them? What are you gonna? So I hear all the time, oh, I advertised in so and so magazine, or I did this advertisement, I got nothing out of it. Well, what was your advertisement? Was it just a business card? I do computer repair. You flip it through, computer repair. It doesn't do anything for them, right? But if you have something in there that goes, do you own a company? And you have 20 employees, and your computer's always down, and you're sitting here paying employees, and, uh, you know, um, where you're sitting there paying employees and you need your computers to run so you're not wasting money? Yeah, I do. Great. Well, we offer computer repair. You got me. You're solving a pain. You know, it's um, pest, pest control. We do pest control. Great. Wonderful pest control. Hey, tired of opening up your cabinet and seeing ants all over your kid's cereal? Uh, yeah. So you've identified a pain and, and they've made an emotional connection with your product or service. So that's extremely important too. So in your marketing, once you decide who the influencers, who they are, where they live, how they buy, all of that, understanding the pain that you're solving for them. Uh, any questions so far? No, I'm going kind of fast. <laughs> Could you identify uh, the, the word brand? I mean, everybody has that word, but it might mean different things. What is your definition of the brand? The brand? Your brand. When you say your brand, it's your logo, your advertising, what you are. It's what you are. It's your message. Your brand is your message. So what are you trying to convey? This year, my message, my brand is be amazing on the front of the thing. Um, I want to help people be amazing with through the power of marketing and stuff like that. So you're building a brand that, identif that identifies with that target market and they're going to like you. You know they're gonna um, they're gonna relate to you. That's why. So building a solid brand of your company that they're gonna identify with you and always think of you top of mind like Coca Cola. People say Coke and they go Pepsi. Okay, oh yeah, that's fine. Whatever. I mean, that's just kind of a general thing. I know in Texas we just call everything Coke and they're like, do you want Sprite or Coke or Dr Pepper? Oh yeah, you know. 
Um, so building a brand is something that gets you to top of mind. Okay? Got it? Got it. All right. Um, okay. What do you think you know? How do you get business now? Is it referrals? Are you marketing? Are you doing social media? Is it Facebook? How are you growing your business and building your brand now? Why do your customers buy from you? Do you know why? Have you interviewed your customers? Have you asked them why they buy from you? One of the biggest things I've done with some of my customers is um, I had them interview their top three clients. Go interview your top three clients. Find out why they buy from you. Because it may surprise you. It may surprise you. Um, what is the perception or reputation of the industry you're in? What what can you do with your brand to offset, if, if you're a lawyer or whatever, how can you offset that? I know last time I gave the talk, um, we were talking about lawyers, and a lawyer put a shark on, on their car. So if that's the re is that if that's the perception if you're going into a criminal uh, thing and you and you want a, a, a lawyer you're going to want a shark right if, or a divorce but if you're doing if you're doing some other type of law you don't necessarily want a shark because you don't want all your money taken or, or what have you, you know, I, it, it's what's the perception uh, and reputation of your company that you can um, that you need to know and understand about your business brand. Um, what's unique about you? I ask this question all the time to my customers, and all of them go, oh, we're the best customer service people. We get the best customer service. Um, what is truly unique about you? Um, you need to, to really think about that and see um, why people buy from you and why you should be, what, it, what is different from you than your competitors? Why would someone, um, like, there's a lot of people that sell promotional marketing materials. I'm unique because I actually sit down with my customers and we go through things like this and we really identify what they're trying to do instead of just throwing a logo on something and putting it out there. Um, I like to work with my customers on that. Um, who are your competitors? What are they doing? What's their message? What are they saying? What, what are they putting out there? Understanding what they're doing will help you build your brand, too. Why don't customers buy from you? Is there a reason they don't buy from you? Is it price? Is it, are you higher? Are you not offering a service that you could be offering? Um, by understanding your competitors and, and being clear on what you, is unique about you and stuff like that, Maybe you can um, figure out why customers aren't buying from you and head that off at the pass and come up with a, a you know, um, come up with an uh, offer where it eliminates why they're not buying from you at that point in time. Um, right here is where I challenge you guys. Uh, like I said earlier, interview your top three clients. Find out why they buy from you, find out what they like doing, why they like doing business with you, find out what you can be doing better, what you can be offering. Maybe there's something out there and they go, gosh, you know, I really love, and that was kind of something I did too. I just did shirts. I didn't, did embroidery and screen printing when I started. And I interviewed one of my clients and I said, well, you know, how am I doing? What can I do better? I really need your feedback so I can grow my business. Comment was, gosh, I really wish you you did pens and all that stuff too. We love working with you. Our vendor really doesn't provide the service that you provide. I wish you did. I said, well, let me check into that. So I started doing that, and then then I interviewed him a few years later. How's it going? Gosh, we really wish you did service awards, TVs and clocks and stuff like that. Great, let me check into that. But their service award program. What are you missing out on? You're missing out on some things just because you're not asking your clients. Mm -hmm. um, what's going on, and they appreciate that. Uh, from that service that you started offering, uh, did you begin having other uh, clients that you, or clients that you already had uh, begin to buy those services as well? Mm -hmm. So you began yeah. creating more long-term value for each client. Exactly. Mm -hmm. 
Exactly. Exactly. So I mean, that just that just puts that just expands your business. I mean, when I started, I was just doing shirts. Now I'm doing. It, now shirts is such a small portion of what I even do anymore. Um, but yeah, so interviewing your clients, you'll understand. You'll find things that you can do that you didn't even think about doing. Uh, research your competitors. Um, find out what they're doing. Again, we talked about this in the last slide. Um, find out what they're doing. Is there is there something that you could be offering that you're not offering that they're offering? And then um, number three is kind of one of my favorites. Um, I keep a folder, and I, I just get ideas all the time, and so I write them down. It might not even relate to anything that I'm doing now, but I just brainstorm ideas, or my or my employees might come up with ideas. I mean, hey, I thought about doing this and this. I mean, well, you know what? Now's not the time to implement that, but let's put it down in the binder, and uh, maybe we'll come up. You know, and then when we need ideas, we've got a book full of ideas. And those ideas might not relate to one particular thing, but might I could maybe relate it to a client I'm trying to help. Oh yeah, I thought about something. I could probably use it in this case. So writing down ideas, brainstorming, like once a month, just get a binder. Um, once a month, just sit there and write down ideas that you think you know you would like to implement sometime, or maybe even immediately. Just write them down. Something that I always ask myself when I'm working towards when I'm doing marketing. Once I've identified kind of what my why is. Uh, who I'm marketing to, how they buy, who the influencer, the decision maker, all of that is. Once I kind of decide all of that, I'm 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 the bright shiny object person, right? Oh, that looks cool. That'd be awesome with my logo on it. Or I want to have type in that magazine. Everyone's talking about it, right? So I have to sit back and go, stop. Look at my goals. Look at who I'm marketing to. What my message is. Is this going to move me further or closer away to my goals? Gosh, that magazine's great, but it's only going to these clients, and that's really not where my where my focus is right now. Might be my focus six months from now. I might change my marketing campaign on my next run to focus to those people. So always, this is a big one. Print this off, put it in your office, do whatever. And every time something comes across, and you're doing anything, I mean, you can be on Facebook, and it'll be a reality check. Wow, is this? Facebook post and what I'm doing here moving me closer to or further away from my goals. Um, you can use that in so many ways. Uh, so uh, that's one of my favorite favorite things. Um, once you kind of have an idea of who your client is, who you're marketing to, um, and everything about them, understanding the lifetime value of a client. Does, does people understand what a lifetime value of a client is? It's, it's funny because people come to me and go, golly, $1,000 for that marketing, that's just so much money. Oh, I can't. I don't have that much money. Well, I have to sit down with people and go, okay, if you have one client, if you spent $1,000 um, and you got, you know, if your average client is, uh, is with you for five years, and does approximately $5,000 a year of business with you, and then they actually refer one new member or one new client to you every year, Your that client, that that uh, new client is worth $25,000. So how, now how does that $1,000 investment look? Doesn't look so big anymore, does it? So if you're really clear on your marketing and who you're targeting and what your message is, and you get you spend a thousand dollars and you got one client for twenty five thousand, how often are you going to run that marketing campaign? What if you were to get two of those clients? Okay. So really understanding and really getting down to the nitty gritty on who you have and what their what their what your average client is worth will help you. Decide what your marketing budget is going to be. So if I have a client that's a small business kind of client, maybe I'm only going to spend a thousand dollars every six months to market to that type of client. If I have a client that brings me three hundred thousand dollars a year in a uniform program, my client, my budget's going to be a lot different to get that client. So 
um, take take some time and, and really work that out. Look at your cl current clients, what they're worth. So build your campaign. Now that you have the, the clear picture on who and your message and why, you need to, and your target, build your campaign. What's your purpose of your goal? I want to get two new clients or ten new clients, whatever that, that number is for you. Who's the target? Who's the decision maker? Everything that we talked about earlier, that, that's where you would fill that out here. How many touches does it typically take to, to, do, to do your product? Hmm? About seven. Seven? So understanding that is clear too. Um, you, you've got a budget. If you've got a thousand dollar budget and it takes seven touches, you're going to have to be really budget minded with that on each touch, right? And how you're going to do that. But being clear, okay, I'm going to do seven touches. My first touch is going to be a letter. My second touch is going to be a postcard. My third touch is a phone call. If you have that all mapped out, you're not like, oh, where am I with this or that or whatever. You're actually, you've actually got it map, mapped out and you can get it done and you know the direction you're going. How long does it take? Seven touches might be two weeks. Seven touches might be one year. You don't know. What's it, but what's the average? By kind of looking at your average and putting that all out. Um, and what's the area that you need to do that in? So one thing a lot of people miss in, um, in their marketing and putting together their campaign is actually developing a script. So now you have the roadmap of this is my budget, this is my message, this is who I'm targeting, this is the decision maker, this is the influencer. I have the whole roadmap, seven touches, takes six months, had this whole roadmap laid out. One thing that people forget is a script. What are you going to do once they call on the phone? Great, someone called me. What do I say now? Right? <laughs> or great, someone called me and your employee picks up the phone and they go, what, what promotion? Right? Oh. How does that make you look? Right? So being clear, getting your script down. Hey, someone calls and goes, hey, I got your flyer in the mail. This is what we're going to say. Have that sitting down at the phone where your employee's at. Have it sitting down in front of you because you know we're running around 100 miles an hour and we pick up the phone and we're like, where are we? I, I don't even remember. So get a script down. Who called? The name. Get their information. The more information you get, the better you can build your marketing campaign next time, too. The more information you can measure, the better that you're going to be able to create stronger campaigns in the future. These are just examples um, I've, I've written down in here. Um, you might have something more specific. If you're selling something really, really specific, you might need to know other items. These are just some ideas that I threw in here. Um, but really make sure that your, your staff understands the offering. Make sure you are 100% have it all because if someone calls, that's a huge missed opportunity if you don't have it all right now. Um, and then you let it rip. So once you have the campaign, you have the script, everything's going, you, you let it go. Let it go, measure it. Make sure you're um, checking in on it. What's it doing? What responses are you getting? Phone calls. If you have a social media guy set up, are you getting any hits to a landing page? Anything that you're doing, gosh, I got, I sent that letter out on Monday. I got 20 hits on my website Tuesday. Great. What are you, make sure you're measuring everything, every avenue that, uh, that you put together in place, phone calls, uh, Facebook, whatever, whatever method you're using in your marketing. You need to measure what worked. What's not working? Can you tweak it? Sometimes you can be in the middle of it and you go, gosh, I'm not getting a response, but I said this one thing on this phone call and all of a sudden this person just changed his tune and bought from me. I can, I can implement that in my script now and see how that goes. So if you're measuring it, you can make little tweaks along the way too. Was the message or offering understood? Is there, there's been a lot of times I've done done something and people go, gosh, I, I didn't understand that, that offering and you have to kind of explain it and you're like, oh, okay. If you make those notes, then you can make that offering and that message clearer on your next, uh, the next go around. 
If you have a seven touch, touch campaign, where are they coming in at? Are they coming in at two? Are they coming in at five? Wow, they're always coming in at five. Whatever I'm doing at five is working. Can I move that up to touch number two, right? So paying attention. I did, I, I did this seven touch campaign. Everyone's coming in at five. Let's move it to two and see if I get a, a stronger um, reaction uh, earlier on. We just, if we shorten our sales cycle, that's all what we want, right? Um, how many deals did you close? How many are still pending? What's the average sales cycle? We talked about that. Um, get some feedback from your sales staff. When they're answering the phone um, and they're talking to the clients, what are they hearing? What are they getting from that? You need to make sure that you're having that conversation with them so that you can, you, you know, I'm not always at my front desk. I'm not always answering my phone. They, on a lot of occasions, see more than I see. So making sure that that communication is open and you're getting feedback from them so you can build your next, your next campaign. Okay. How did you do? Don't forget to celebrate. This is something, you know, you, you might get done in a campaign, you go, oh, man, I did all that work, I measured it, I did everything. It's still a celebration because now you have a starting point. Now you have something to build on because you didn't have anything to build on before. Now you know, change step five to step two. Change, change this message in the script because you know as soon as you started saying that that you were closing deals. You have something to measure to make your next marketing campaign even more successful. So don't forget to celebrate. Celebrate with your staff. Um, celebrate and just you know figure it out. <laughs> um, now, you, uh, any clarifications, concerns, questions? I know I kind of breezed through that. I know it started late, so I was trying to go really fast. <laughs> Um, Mike, again, I'll talk about Mike this morning. He talked a lot. Invest in yourself. Invest in learning your product. Invest in learning who your clients are. Uh, invest. A couple of uh, recommended reading are here. Uh, Purple Cow, Compound Effect, The Sales Bible. Uh, Think Your Toys. So hard for me to read that book because every time I start reading it, I have ideas and I start writing. And it takes me, for, it takes, it takes me forever. So if you're super creative like I am, it's really hard to get through that book, um, but it's really, really good. Um, I love Thinker Toys, and then John Asraf's The Answer is a really good one, too. So um, I know I breezed through that. But any questions? No? Yeah.